Welcome to the C5 Thermal Imager tutorial from the Infrared Training Center. The following presentation will help you get started using this new model of thermal imager from FLIR Systems. Of course, knowing how to use the camera is just the first step. Thermographers must also understand how to interpret what they're seeing, and for that to happen, proper certification training is required. So to get the most out of your investment in this technology, ITC can help. Head to infraredtraining.com schedule where you'll find a number of training dates available at convenient locations across the U.S. and Canada, including options for online certification too. And for our fellow thermographers based in Europe, the Middle East, or Africa, irtraining.eu has the latest schedule for classes in your region. Now the C5 Thermal Imager is for any thermography professional who is using infrared to inspect electrical or mechanical equipment, building envelopes, roof systems, and more. It's easy to operate and is mostly touchscreen driven using the display here on the back. Now as for the hardware, the imager itself is a 160 by 120 focal plane array and comes standard with a wide angle lens. It offers two temperature ranges and the ability to manually adjust both the span and level. But perhaps the most interesting feature is its integration with the cloud and FLIR system's new Ignite Web, which offers users the ability to upload thermal images directly to the internet, as well as share these simultaneously with colleagues. If you're looking for the complete list of specifications, check out the FLIR support website at support.flir.com. Once there, go to Downloads and click on Data Sheets and FOV Calculators. Look for the C-Series camera icon. Selecting the link for the C5 will open the corresponding data sheet for the thermal imager. Simply scroll through the document to view the camera specs. So let's get started with an overview of the C5. And before we set the camera up, I want to first point out the swipe down menu. With the thermal imager turned on, simply swiping down here on the display will open up a hidden menu with a number of options. From here, you can turn Wi-Fi on and off by simply tapping the icon. If supported by your mobile phone, you can share the phone's internet connection with the camera via Bluetooth. Tapping Upload enables or disables the automatic uploading of images to the cloud, and LAMP will activate the built-in light to help illuminate dark targets. This allows you to capture a better visible light control photo when saving an image. Finally, the slide bar controls the display brightness. Pressing on it, you can slide it left to dim the LCD display and save battery life, or slide it to the right to brighten the screen if you're working outdoors and are having difficulty seeing the display. Swipe back up from the bottom to return to a live image. Now before we move on to the basics of camera setup, let's talk a little bit more about Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. While the Wi-Fi connection can be used to download firmware updates, these features are here largely to support FLIR's new cloud service called Ignite. To configure the connectivity options for both Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, tap the settings icon located here to the right of the display. From here, select connections. Connecting to a Wi-Fi network is fairly easy. From the Connections menu, select the desired Wi-Fi network, enter a password if needed, and you should be good to go. To connect through Bluetooth, you must first ensure that Bluetooth and Internet Connection Sharing, or Hotspot Mode, are enabled on your mobile device. From the Connections menu on the camera, enable Bluetooth to search for available devices. If Bluetooth is enabled on your mobile device, it will appear in the list on the thermal imager. Select the device to pair, and then allow the connection from the mobile device. Once connected either via Wi-Fi or Bluetooth, you can pair the camera to your Ignite account. From the Accounts menu on the camera, select Pair. Now go to the website shown on the camera screen and enter the code. Either log in to your account or create a new account to complete the process. Once paired, you can upload images directly from the camera. From the gallery view on your thermal imager, you can choose to manually upload directories or specific images to the Ignite library. If you prefer, you can have the camera upload newly saved images automatically. To enable this feature, select Settings, Save Options, and Storage. Select Auto Upload and switch this on. This feature will ensure that your images are backed up automatically as you save, as long as you have an internet connection. When you log in to the Ignite website, you'll see all the previously uploaded images and directories. 
You can choose to download an entire directory, or from the folder you can select specific images to download. Once downloaded, right-click on the zip file and extract all to the new folder. Since these are radiometric images, you can use the FLIR software, like Thermal Studio, to view the images, analyze them, and create a new inspection report. For now, let's get back to the basics of setting up your thermal imager. Having the correct date and time entered into your camera is important for proper documentation and record keeping. You'll also want to be sure that you're using the right temperature and distance units. To set the date and time, tap the settings icon to the right of the display. From here, select device settings, press language time and units, and this will open a sub-menu where you can then select date and time. Pick the date and time field and adjust these values by simply sliding your finger up and down over the numbers. With the correct time set, press the check mark icon to lock in your setting. Use the same process to adjust the date, being sure to press the check mark icon when you're done. It's here in the date and time submenu that you can also adjust the date and time format and select your time zone. As for temperature and distance units, these can be adjusted as well. Back out to the Language Time and Units submenu by pressing the back arrow located in the upper left corner of the display. It's here that you'll see the options to select either distance or temperature units. Simply pick whichever one you'd like to change, select your desired units, and return to the settings menu using the back arrow. To return to live imaging mode, push the camera icon on the right side of the display. The C5 series thermal imager comes with two different temperature ranges, range 1 from negative 4 to 302, and range 2 from 32 to 752 degrees. To change the range, go to the settings and select camera temperature range. Pick the desired range and simply back out to the main settings menu. Tapping the camera icon to the right of the display again will return you to live imaging mode. The C5 Thermal Imager is a fixed focus camera, so adjusting focus isn't necessary. I should mention, however, that there is a minimum focus distance of about 4 inches, but for your typical PDM or building inspection, it's a distance you're probably never going to be working at with this camera. It's also well within the safe approach distance if you're using it to inspect electrical equipment, so it's a value that's really not a concern, but it's something you should definitely understand. You'll find that most of the controls of your C5 thermal imager can be accessed from the main menu. To open, tap the menu button indicated here by the three dots in the lower right corner of the display. This is where you can change your image mode, select a measurement tool, change the color palette, or adjust the temperature scale. Tap image mode to switch between the four different viewing options. These include thermal MSX, thermal, digital camera, and picture in picture. Thermal MSX, which stands for Multispectral Dynamic Imaging, combines both the thermal and digital cameras to create a blended image that better shows physical details of an object while displaying things such as equipment labels or breaker numbers, something that a thermal imager alone is not able to see. And that's what thermal only mode is all about. It only shows the infrared camera feed as another option. The digital camera provides you with a visible light perspective, while picture-in-picture -picture displays a thermal image in the center surrounded by a visible light border. Now, most of you will probably work in Thermal MSX, so we'll just leave it there for now. To return to the main menu, click the arrow in the upper right corner of the display. The measurement option offers three different temperature measurement tools, including a center spot tool, a hot spot box, which provides the maximum temperature inside the display box, and a cold temperature box with the minimum temperature value. Simply touch or toggle the icon for whichever tool you want. Multiple tools can be used at once and sizes of both the hot and cold spot boxes can also be adjusted. For now, let's select the center spot value. Click the arrow to return to the main menu. Here you'll see the measurement value for that spot displayed in the upper left corner of the screen. The main menu is also where you can adjust the color palette. 
tap color to browse through the available choices. The C5 thermal imager comes with seven different color palettes, including iron, rainbow, rainbow high contrast, white hot, black hot, arctic, and lava. Drag your finger up and down across the various options and simply touch the thumbnail of the palette you'd like to use. Regardless of which color palette you select, these can always be changed later with the saved image, either in the camera or the processing software. Finally, the temperature scale setting is where you can either auto or manually adjust your span and level settings. Changing span and level is how we set the contrast and brightness of the thermal image. By default, the camera runs in auto mode. This will automatically set the scale based on the hottest and coldest objects that the detector sees in the frame. This option works well for quick adjustments, but it's not something you want to use when your target is surrounded by either very hot or cold objects. When that's the case, you'll need to thermally tune the image. Thermal tuning is the process of adjusting both the span and level to optimize thermal contrast and brightness. To thermally tune the image, select Manual. This will highlight the top and bottom numbers on the scale, what we call the span of the image. Touching either of the numbers will lock or unlock that value. A white highlight indicates when a number is unlocked. Now you can move the values up or down by simply dragging your finger across the virtual slider. Pick either the top or bottom numbers to change the width of the span, or unlock both to move them together, which is adjusting level. So what's the right span and level to use? We'll come to certification training and find out. Moving on from the main menu, let's return to the settings for a moment and talk about measurement parameters. Now, if you're using a measurement tool, you'll also need to make adjustments to these values. Measurement parameters include emissivity, reflected temperature, relative humidity, air temperature, and atmospheric distance. All five affect the accuracy of your measurements, especially emissivity and reflected temperature. As such, these values must be set correctly. To know which numbers you should use requires a level one IR certification training at a minimum. To save a thermal image with the C5, simply press the save button located here on top of the camera. To view your saved images, press the playback button located here to the right of the display. Tap the gallery folder to open a thumbnail view where you can browse through all of the stored images. Pressing a thumbnail will open an image as well as display the visible light photo and other data. The C5 also provides the ability to view, edit, and manage saved images. First, you can expand both the thermal and visual photos by clicking the arrow icon in the lower right corner of each image. The menu button, located at the top right corner of the screen, offers several additional options. Here you can upload your saved image to the cloud, edit the image, move it to another destination folder to better organize your data, add notes which can be used or referenced later in the reporting software, and finally delete if you want to remove the image entirely from the camera. Of these, the editing option offers quite a bit of functionality. In the editing submenu, you can adjust things such as span and level, change the measurement tool, or pick a different color palette. Now that we've covered the basics, what's next? Well, if you haven't done so already, it's time to get certified. For those of you in the U.S. and Canada, head to infraredtraining.com schedule to browse upcoming training dates and locations, including options for online certification too. If you're based in Europe, the Middle East, or Africa, IRTraining.eu is where you'll find a list of training classes in your region. If you're thinking about attending a training class here in the United States, we also run a number of special offers throughout the year. To hear what those are and check availability, call us at the number below or email ITC at info at infraredtraining.com. One more thing, for those programs with six or more thermographers that need certification training, an on-site course is likely your best bet. Not only will you save money by having ITC come right to your facility, we can also provide customized training that utilizes your equipment and infrastructure too. Contact us to learn more and get a quote. And if you've already registered for a certification class, well, we look forward to working with you. 
Thanks for watching, and we'll see you soon.